Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to go ahead and tackle how to add and subtract decimals. So we have here the problem 2 and 5 tenths plus 2 and 8 tenths. Uh, we can go ahead and visualize this problem using base 10 blocks. So I'm going to draw 2 and 5 tenths using base 10 blocks. Each hole can be uh, represented by a grid. So if I have two holes, I draw two full grids. So here I have my two holes. And each tenth can be represented by a rod. So I have five tenths here. So I can draw five rods. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go ahead and now draw to an eight tenth. So I have two holes. So each grid represents a hole. Here are my two holes. And then I have eight tenths. So I'm going to have eight rods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember that each grid is made up of 10 rods because that would give you 10 tenths and that gives you a hole. So now all I do is put my pictures together. Well, I'm going to first put together my holes. So I have here one, two, three, four holes. So I can just write that I have four holes. And now I'm going to count all my tenths together. Remember, if I get 10 of them, I make another hole. So I'm going to go ahead and count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to stop here because I've realized now that I have one hole with all these 10 10. So I'm going to switch this 4 to a 5. So now I have 5 holes. I'm going to continue counting the rest of the 10. And I have 1, 2, 3 more after that. So now I can write my answer as 5 and 3 10. Let's take a look at a different problem. Here I have 1 in 5 hundredths plus 78 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and draw what each of these uh, represents. So one hole that could be drawn with one grid. And then I have here 5 hundredths, not 5 tenths, because remember, the first place value up to the decimal point is the tenth. The second one is the hundredth. And each hundredth can be drawn just using a dot or a one because there are 100 ones inside of each grid. So I have five of them. I can just go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five. So here are my five dots, and that represents all the 500s that I have here. I'm now going to go ahead and draw 7,800. Well, I know I have seven tenths, and each of those can be represented by a rod. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have eight tenths, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me go ahead and make these a little darker. Now all I do is put this together. So I know I have one hole. That's this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and write that in my answer. One hole. And now I'm going to put all the tenths together. So I have... Let's see, I have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm going to go ahead and write 7 tenths. 7 tenths. And now I'm going to go ahead and add all my 1's together. And I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now remember, because I have 13 one, that means I have at least one tenth because, let me go ahead and write this down first. I have 13 one, so 13 hundredths. So that means I really have this much, 13 hundredths. So when I put all these together, I notice that I have one tenth, one tenth here and I have seven tenths there. So I can put those together and I can say that those two together are equal to Eight tenths. So what I really have is one plus eight tenths plus three hundredths. Now I can put all this together in the proper place values, and I would end up with one decimal. Bring the eight over to the first spot after the decimal, and then the three goes in the second spot. Notice I have one, two spots here, so the three goes there. So my answer to one and five hundredths plus seventy-eight hundredths is 1 and 83 hundredths. Let's take a look at one more problem here. We have 3 and 71 hundredths plus 54 hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these using base 10 blocks. I have three holes here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw three holes. 
All right, I'm going to do that using the grid. So I have one, two, three grid. That's my three holes. Now I'm going to draw the seven tenths. So that can be drawn by using seven rods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I have my one hundredth. So that's just a dot. I'm going to go ahead and draw now the 54 hundredths. So plus, and I'll use green for that. Let's see, the, I have no holes, so no grids, and I have five rods. So one, two, three, four, five, and four dots. One, two, three, four. So here I, I have all the drawings. Now I'm going to put them together. So I'm going to go ahead and count all my holes. I have one, two, three holes in the drawings represented. So I'm going to put three holes as part of my answer so far. Now I'm going to go ahead and count the rods. And remember that if we get to 10 rods, we have another hole. So let's go ahead and count those. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we could stop here and add another hole to the three because I have 10 rods. And 10, 10 gives me a hole. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off the three and turn that into a four. I'm going to now put together all of my hundreds. And those are, oh, I'm sorry, I haven't finished. I still have two tens here. So I can put my dots right here and I have two tens. And now I put all my little uh, ones together or my hundreds. And I have one, two, three, four, and five of them. And that number goes after the two. And there you have it. The answer is 3 and 71 hundredths plus 54 hundredths is 4 and 25 hundredths. Okay, so we just figured out that the answer to this problem was 4 and 25 hundredths using a model. But there's a faster way that we can get the answer to this as well. And that's by lining up the decimal points. So let's go ahead and explore that. Um, let's, let's add these together without using models. And the first step that we need to do is write the first number. 3 and 7100. And now we write this number right under this one, but we line up by the decimal point. So make sure that this dot lines up with that dot. So we write a zero here, a decimal, our five, and our four. And we add like we would normally. So now my answer would be one plus four is five. Seven plus five is 12. I write the two, carry the one and bring down the decimal and leave it in the same spot. And one plus three plus zero is four. And there, now you can check that you have actually done this problem correctly. Let's take a look at this problem. 12 and three tenths plus four and nine tenths. So we're gonna go ahead and solve this problem using both the base 10 block model and also um, solving it by lining up the decimal. So if I have 12 and 3 tenths, I can draw it by drawing 12 grids. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and notice that they don't have to be perfect. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There I have my 12 holes. And now I'm going to draw my 3 tenths using the rods. So I have 1, 2, 3 of those. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the 4, 9, 10. So I have four holes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the 9 rods. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 rods. I'm going to now count all the holes that I have. In this case, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I can say that so far the holes, I have 16 of them. Now I'm going to put all the rods together. Remember that if we have 10 of them together, we have a hole. So let's count those. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And now we can stop because we have 10 of those. So we can cross this off to 16 and turn it into 17. And now I see that I have one and two rods left over. So that's my, that's two after the decimal. So I have two tenths. 
So my answer to this problem is 17 and 2 tenths using a base 10 block model. Let's go ahead and solve that same exact problem by lining up the decimals. So I have here 12 and 3 tenths and I line up the decimals and I put the 4 here and the decimal there and my 9 in the tenth place. Now I add like I would normally. Before I add, I like to bring down the decimal so I don't get confused where things go. So 3 plus 9 is 12, so I write the 2 down, carry the 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 1 plus nothing is 1. So there you have it, same answer as before when I used the base 10 block models. There you go, 17 and 2 tenths. All right, so we've looked at a lot of addition problems, addition uh, sample problems, and I subtract decimals. And let's go ahead now take a look at a, at a sample problem using subtraction. So here I have 4 and 800 minus 1 and 7,400. I'm going to go ahead and first uh, look at the big number and draw that representing base 10 blocks. So I have four holes. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 holes. And then I have no tens, so no rods. And I have eight hundreds, or in this case, the dots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to go ahead and take away from this big representation model one and seventy-four hundreds. I can easily do that by just crossing off what I have here to take away. So I have to take away a hole, so I'm going to go ahead and take away one hole. There it is gone. Now I have to take away seven tenths, or in this case seven rods, but I notice that in my picture I don't have any rods. However, we do know that each grid is actually made up of ten rods. So I'm going to go ahead and regroup and say that this grid is actually ten rods. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm going to go ahead and take away seven of those. So let's cross off seven of them. We have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I'm left with just three of them, okay? So I'm left with three of them. Now I have to take away four hundredths. In, or, in, the, in our case, uh, with the models, it's four dots. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And to get my answer, all I have to do is just figure out what's left. So here, what I have left are one, two holes, decimal, or and, and I put my rods first because that's my ten, one, two, three of them, and I have one, two, three, four dots, so four hundred. And there's your answer, two and thirty-four hundred. Let's take a look at another example problem here. We have 3 and 36 hundredths minus 2 and 28 hundredths. So I'm going to draw my big number first, and that's three holes. 1, 2, 3. I have three rods. 1, 2, 3, and six dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I have to take away two holes. So I can do that by crossing off two holes, one hole, two holes, and this is done. And I'll take away two rods, so I can do this, one rod, two rods, and I have to take away eight dots. Only problem is, boys and girls, I see that in my picture, I only have six dots. Remember that each rod is made up of ten dots, because each ten is made up of ten tens. So I can go ahead and regroup this rod into ten dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now I can take away 8 of them. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, I only need to take away 8. Let's go back. So let's count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm done. I've taken away everything that I need to take away. Now to get my answer, all I do is count what's left. So I know I have one hole, so I'm going to put that here. And let's see, do I have any rods left? No. So I'm going to go ahead and put a zero here for no rods left or no tenths left. And now I count how many uh, hundreds I have or dots. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that goes here in the hundreds place. 
And my answer is 1 and 800. So we just solved this problem and we got our answer of 1 and 800. There's another way that we can find our answer and that's just by lining up the decimals like we did with the addition. So I'm going to go ahead and write these numbers down. I have 3 and 36 hundredths and obviously always write the bigger number on top. Line up your decimal. So I put my decimal here, my 2 goes in the 1's place, and then the 2 and the 8 go here. And I put my subtraction sign. And I subtract like I would normally. Before you even begin, drop that decimal down. It's going to stay in the same spot. So here we have to borrow. So this 3 is really going to turn into a 2 plus 1. And I have 16 take away 8. We know that gives us 8. 2 minus 2 gives us 0. And 3 minus 2 gives us 1. And there you have it. We now know that we got the right answer. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example problem here. We have 4 and 3 hundredths minus 2 and 25 hundredths. So I'm going to solve this by lining up the decimals. I write my big number first. And then I line up the decimal of the second one and write those numbers in and subtract like I would normally. So I'm going to go ahead and say that 3 minus 5 I can't do, so I have to borrow. This 0 doesn't have anything to give me, so I borrow again. This turns into a 3, this turns into a 9, and that into a 13. And 13 take away 5, well, let's see. I know that 5 plus 1 gives me 6, plus 1 gives me 7, plus 1 gives me 8, plus 1 gives me 9, plus 1 gives me 10, plus 1 gives me 11, plus another one gives me 12, plus another one gives me 13. How many ones did I add? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I know that 13 minus 5 gives me 8. 9 minus 2 gives me 7. Let's bring down that decimal. And 3 minus 2 gives me 1. And there you have it. My answer is 1 and 78 hundred. Let's take a look at one last example problem here. We have 15 and 8 tenths minus 9 and 67 hundred. So I'm going to go ahead and line up the decimals. I have 15 and 8 tenths and 9, line up the decimal, and 67 hundredths. Notice that there's already a problem. We have a spot here where there's no number. If you ever have this happen, whether it's in the top or bottom number, fill in those empty spaces with a zero. All right, so now we can go ahead and subtract. Zero take away seven we can't do, so we must borrow. That means this, seven, uh, this 8 turns into a 7 plus 1. Now I have 10 minus 7. That gives me 3. 7 minus 6 gives me 1. Bring down the decimal. 5 minus 9 I can't do. This turns into a 0 plus 1. 15 minus 9 is 6. So my answer is 6 and 1300. All right, that was adding and subtracting decimals using base 10 block models and also uh, figuring out the answer by lining up the decimal.